Welcome back everybody. Another spray paint test here today. We're going to be what I hope is going to be a pretty good one. We're going to be testing the Molotow Chrome Burner Bone Burner Chrome. And the reason why I am looking at that cuz you know we all have the Molotow pen and there's no question the liquid chrome pen from Molotow sprays or it actually sprays very well through the airbrush. But, now like here's an example of a wheel that I painted with the Molotow pen. And as you can see, it is real chrome. Absolutely fantastic. And, speaking of what I just said, um, I know that a lot of people actually pop the top off the chrome pen and put it in their airbrush and spray it and it, it really does work. You can spray it through the airbrush and it comes out fantastic, just like that. But I know that most people who are possibly not in the hobby, or even a lot of people even in the hobby, don't have an airbrush. And they want to be able to just take a can off the shelf and spray chrome. So this, um, I hope this works because it's, her, it's from the same company. And what I'm going to do here especially is I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to clip that wheel off of there and I'm going to spray the other two wheels with the spray and then compare Molotow to Molotow. Now these other two cans here are an example of... Oh, like say for example this one over here. This is an example of an inaccurate cap. Now this, nowhere on this can does it say that it wants, to, that it actually is chrome, but the cap is chromed, so it makes you think that it's chrome. And then over here, Duplicolor, you've got uh, paint that says it's chrome, and it really will come out pretty much like the cap, especially if you spray a black base coat. But, I'm curious about this one. Funny, the cap just fell off. Hold on one second. Okay, yeah, I needed the cap on there to mention that. Um, curiously, this may be a real accurate chrome, and it has not chromed the cap. Um, so it's just one of those things where I think that this is going to be probably very similar to the Duplicolor Chrome and um, they could have gotten away with uh, probably could have gotten away with chrome in the cap we will find out now so today we're just going to do the basic spoon test I'm going to set up a spoon and a, a bare spoon well I'll get to that in a minute I wanted to mention the other thing that I'm showing there curiously now Malatau as it turns out I got this can from a website called Bombing Science. It seems to be pretty much one of the only places you can get this stuff. Molotow is made in Germany and there is, you know, Bombing Science keeps it all in stock and there's all kinds of different varieties. And look at the size of the can. And uh, it wasn't very expensive, I think about nine dollars, uh, shockingly. Um, so, I mean, but curiously it doesn't come with a cap because graffiti artists, it is graffiti paint. Graffiti artists want to be able to control their caps better. So I think that all graffiti artists have assortments of caps and at the same website they sell assortments of caps. So I got a couple of different assortments here and I don't know, I'm, I'm for this test I'm just gonna go with a basic regular cap like you would see on Rust-Oleum, I think. And, um, go from there. We'll explore the caps probably maybe in future videos. Uh, so that is it for that. I'm going to go ahead and get the test set up and uh, I'll be right back. Okay so here's the basic setup. I am going to be painting these parts over here a little bit differently from this one spoon over here. So I am um, kind of skipping the primer test. I don't know why, but um, so we're going to be trying it on bare plastic and then we are going to try it on a black base coat. And the black base coat is because a lot of these chrome paints such as Alclad, they require a, a black base coat or you know they suggest a black base coat to uh, really bring out the uh, chrome color properly. So we're going to try that as well. And so, and the reason why I have a second black spoon over here is because I'm going to paint this one a different way. 
Now these two spoons over here and these parts, I'm going to paint just like you normally would your patio furniture with a can of Rust-Oleum. One or two, maybe three coats of just regular, regular, um, you know, start with a light coat and then a kind of a heavier coat and maybe a third coat, which is also a heavy coat. But I've seen online that, and on YouTube, that uh, with chrome paint, what you can do is you can put a whole bunch of very, very light mist coats onto uh, your black surface, and then at the end you will actually have an opportunity to uh, burnish it or polish it or what do you call it? Rub it. Uh, there's a word for that. But uh, you will be able to... Um... Also, if you're curious on how I got such a glossy black, believe it or not, this is Walmart 99 cent gloss black. I sprayed these about a week ago. I just wanted to make sure they were ready for the test. And so they are... This is cured gloss black and uh, ready for the test. So uh, what I've done is what I've, I've put on a tip that I think to be a very basic tip. It's a bit of a guess, but we're going to find out. And we'll start spraying over here. And uh, let's do it. Okay, so I'm going to pause right here and investigate a little bit. Okay, so what's happening over here, this is the bare plastic. It's definitely crazing the plastic. It's either the paint getting crazed or the plastic getting crazed. So it reacts with plastic. That means that it is a hot paint and would definitely require a primer base coat. The primer would be to protect the plastic. Um, and that is on regular thickness coats. And at the same time, I am running into this. It is also on a thicker coat like this. It is reacting to the um, base coat gloss black on regular thickness coats. And a kind of a similar reaction is happening here on the bare plastic parts here. Now it's a kind of a thick paint, so it, it's wanting to orange peel a little bit. But if you look at the center um, guard there, this is a Hummer wheel, that's the uh, inflator thingy. It is um, crazing a little bit. The paint is crazing a little bit there. It's also, let me hold up this other part here. It is not as shiny as just doing it with the pen. Now, of course, the whole reason for wanting a spray is because on small surfaces like this, it's no problem. But if you were wanting to do a large surface, like a bumper, um, you would get uh, streaks from the pen, and you would you definitely want to spray. Now, there's no question. You can definitely pop the cap on the, uh, the pen and pour the liquid chrome into your airbrush, and, and you will get this finish right here. But let me see. Let me continue on. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to stop this test right here and I'm going to put up a separate set of wheels here. These are also not primed bare plastic because what I want to do there is start putting the mist coats on there because over here on this test it's looking pretty good. It hasn't crazed the paint or the plastic yet. These are very very light coats and maybe that is the trick. So there's two coats on this one already and there may be as many as 10. By the way, these are separated by about 10 minutes. And I will start doing that on these parts here and see what kind of results we get. So, onward.
All right, so what I've done here now is I've moved the whole thing out into the sun. Reason being, I'm running short on time and I need to speed this up because there's going to be so many coats. And the sun helps them dry and cure quite a bit faster. Here's the results over here. You see me trying to save see me trying to save that spoon. Right about now I'm going to stop trying to save that spoon. It's just making it worse and worse. Now putting the extra thick coats on these bare wheels does seem to be helping a little bit. So I'm going to keep doing that and we'll just see what happens. And I guess this was the second missed coat on these wheels. And so far so good. And things are looking pretty good on this spoon over here as well. Now this of course is going to have to be buffed at the end. I think that was the fourth coat. Maybe wrong. But we'll keep going and we'll speed this up to about every every five minutes because I'm out in the sun now and it should help. And so onward. Okay, so this is what we have now. Just finished the tenth coat on these parts here. And as you can see, since it had no primer coat or no base coat whatsoever, we did have a little crazing on the plastic. And so that is verified. This paint absolutely has to have a base coat of some kind. Otherwise it's uh, on plastic. Otherwise it's going to do this. And so that just verified that. And if you saw me trying to rescue these wheels, I put uh, a couple, two or three more coats of uh, regular, regular um, kind of uh, regular coats on there. Trying to rescue those. Did it rescue them? I don't know. Of course, there's a buffing process coming up after these are completely cured. And we will see. Get around this side. They're shiny, but uh, it was starting to get too thick, so I stopped. I stopped building up those coats. And now, this—that's my washing machine in the background. We'll wait. Okay, so coming over here to this one. Let's take a look here. So what you'll see is we've got a kind of a dusty appearance. And from what I understand, that is what you want. So what we want to do now is let this cure for you know, a few days. And I'll, I'll leave it in my shed, which is like a big food dehydrator. 
and uh, after it is cured, we will buff it and see what kind of an appearance we can get from that. Of course, if you can buff it too much, you'll end up with like gunmetal appearance. But it is my understanding that that's the way you have to do this kind of paint. I learned that from a YouTube video. Uh, right offhand, I don't remember his name, but I will find it, and I will, I will put a link to his video where he did this with Spastix. Um, Spastix uh, chrome paint had to be applied the same way. Black base coat, 10 mist coats, and then a buffing. And so we will see. We're gonna we're gonna buff that one, and we'll try buffing these with like a Q-tip, and we'll try buffing that, and we're gonna totally give up on this and this. So next scene will be after a few days in the buffing process. Okay, so it has been a whole week. This stuff has been drying and curing for a whole week and we are ready to mess with it the rest of the way. Now don't click away. I know what you're probably thinking. That's not real chrome and it doesn't look quite good yet, but remember we haven't even tried any type of buffing yet. And so I want to uh, I want to urge you to stay until the end of the video. So uh, what we're looking at here, um, say for example, like this is real chrome up here. This is a real chrome tree. And as you can see, it's not quite up to snuff. Certainly a bit shiny, but not perfect. Now this is really curious paint. This is, this is some neat stuff. And I'll tell you why in a minute. This is uh, this has been an experience. So what we have here, if you remember, these were the failures. This is the bare spoon. This is the painted spoon that had a paint reaction. And you probably uh, I just gave something away there. But uh, this is this is these are bare parts with ten light coats. Bare parts with ten light coats. And then this one over here was painted black with ten light coats, 10 mist coats. And I think that's going to be the best result right there. Hasn't been buffed at all. As you can see, we've got that fine powder on there. It's just been misted 10 times. And so we have the perfect application right there. Now over here, I want to show you what I've been doing to try to buff. As it turns out, this paint is so incredibly hard that buffing doesn't really do anything. <laughs> and I'll show you that uh, live on the other spoon um, in, in just a moment. But this stuff is very, very, very hard. And so buffing um, just with a cotton cloth and nothing else really doesn't do anything at all. And I actually tried that on this, these parts here. I want to show you like right about here I tried a few different things. From here to here, I just used new finish. New finish is just a car polish, the type of really safe car polish that you can um, apply even on a clear coat on a, on a polish. As you can see, it didn't do anything at all. Like right about there, had no, no treatment whatsoever, no buffing, no sealer coat, no wax, no nothing right here had the new finish. Nothing happened, so, you know, let's try something a little worse. So that was new finish there. And so realizing how hard the paint is, I might be able to use something stronger. So I used this actual compound scratch doctor, which actually has some particles in it. And from here to here has been polished with that stuff. Now normally with the chrome paint, say if you were using the Duplicolor chrome and you tried to put something like a polishing compound on there, honestly if you put, honestly on a regular paint if you just buffed it too much it would turn this really really dark gray gunmetal color and I think we all know that. We've all tried that with chrome paints. We tried to buff it and it turned uh, like a dark gray, and uh, that's normal. Now, with new finish or the uh, scratch doctor, that would normally absolutely destroy it, but it didn't. 
didn't have good results, but it also didn't turn it dark gray or take the cover off because it's so rock hard. So that told me that we have a uh, different situation here. We have a shell on the, um, this paint kind of creates a shell that is metal and that would be aluminum. So what it's done is it has created an actual aluminum plating, you know, albeit a, a rough one, but it has done an aluminum plating, a very, very hard uh, plating with nothing else. And so you can use something crazy like Brasso. I actually used Brasso right here from this section from here to here. Let me try to get in closer there. As expected, it's not showing up much. But, um, there we go. That's not the best result. Let me show you what the best result is so far. On this spoon here, this of course was a disaster, so it's now become a test bed. And if you look like maybe right here, that is basically the finish, the part that didn't wrinkle up. That is the finish that I had along the edge. If you look here where I started applying the Brasso, now Brasso is a suicide mission for paint. If you were to put it on chrome paint or any paint at all, it, it would be gone. It would be destroyed and ruined. But what it did here is it actually polished it like metal. See this? I mean, absolutely fantastic. And that was just a quick test. You see, like, right here, that's the way it was. Right there. And then right here is where I polished. You can polish this paint like metal with a metal polish. And I also did a spot up here in the front. So it's the type of thing you would have to work with. And of course, this spoon doesn't have the optimum application, not at all. So what I'm going to actually film here is I'm going to film that process on the good spoon in just a moment. So um, the other parts here, I'm not really going to mess with much. If you look here, so if you remember, this is the part right here that was painted with the pen, the Molotow pen, that we all know is perfect chrome. Absolutely fantastic. You know, so like, this is the Molotow pen painted part and this over here is real chrome, real kit chrome. I just brought a tree out. As you can see it is the best chrome we've come up with yet. Absolutely fantastic but you compare that to the spray can. So this is Malatau pen versus Malatau spray. As you can see, there's a difference there. One on the left is definitely better. Uh, and to compare to um, Duplicolor, I brought the Duplicolor can out here as well, right there. Now, um, these mufflers were painted with the Duplicolor chrome, which, gosh, I used to think was fantastic. But now, even the Molotow spray beats those. Is that the, uh, yeah, okay. So the Molotow spray beats Duplicolor just straight out of the can, you see there? But Molotow pen beats Molotow spray. Just for the record. And all together there, you see what you got. So I'm very happy to have the can. Even after all that spraying, I still got a ton of paint in there and uh, surely do some more testing here. 
But now what we got to do is I got to set the camera up on a tripod so that the camera's not so shaky. And we can film. What we're going to try to do is polish exactly half of this spoon so we can see um, start and finish. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to start off with just a buffing with a Q-tip. And I'm going to buff the whole thing. This isn't going to be a half and half thing, but the actual polishing will be only half and half. Only this half. Where am I? There. So, uh, now normally, this is all you could possibly do with a, a spray paint or a chrome spray paint. And you would only be able to buff it very lightly with a Q-tip. And then you would even have to, or a cotton cloth, or paper towel maybe, but you would also have to limit the amount of that that you even do. You can tell already I'm going to have to disable autofocus. Because even a Q-tip would make its way through to making it a dull kind of a, like I said, a gunmetal color. You can see some of it's coming off. I'm going to have to do the smear test once I'm done here. But I'll kind of time lapse it here and stop talking for a moment. Okay, so that's what we got from just the buffing process. As you, as you can see, it really seems to have possibly even dulled it out a little. But we don't know. That we, but we know that that's not going to be the case with the actual brasso. So at this point, we're going to mark a line. We're not going to mark a line. We're just going to imagine a line right down the middle, and we are going to polish half of this with brasso, and we'll time lapse that as well. So here we go. Okay, so yeah, I mean, you saw it all happen. I polished through to the black base coat, but that's okay. We're just proving a point here anyway, and we're learning from it. So, you know, ten, ten mist coats is not very thick. Not very thick at all. I think that ultimately what you need to do is start with the black base coat and do a bunch of mist coats uh, up until the point where you feel like you're going to be able to do I'd say five or six mist coats and then put on some thick coats because the polishing process to make it super smooth you're gonna have to take a lot off and when you do that you just stand that chance of going under um, but it's okay you know I'm happy with what we got it's hard to believe this is a plastic spoon 
and it is super shiny and I'll take it out into the sun in a moment here but I want to do the reflection test that's going to be the wrong angle I'm going to put it right there okay let's see what we got yeah it's reflecting And it's a work in process, and that, and it's a work in progress. I will continue to play with this, and we will come up with some better ideas on what to do. Obviously, a thicker coat of this paint is what I'm going to do. And uh, yeah, you know, in uh, in review. Of course, if you have an airbrush, just just pour this pen into the airbrush and you'll spray on chrome. It's, it, it is, of course, going to be kind of uh, orange peel. And I don't know if you can uh, polish this stuff at all, but I think I've proven that if you buy the spray, you're going to end up with a, a real, actual metal shell that you can polish with Brasso. And so um, you can definitely work with it after that. And so that's what we got. Half and half. So let's take it out into the sun and see how bad that can get. All right, so I can't even see the viewfinder. I can sort of see a spoon on my screen. I don't know what we've got. I hope it's showing something good. Ultimately, there's a whole bunch of uh, different ways you can get a chrome finish on there. I would say that this is the best one, best idea once it gets perfected because it is real metal. Of course, they're all real metal. It, there's uh, They do it by a bunch of uh, aluminum dust in the paint. But this is the first one I've ever seen that you're able to polish. And so I'm going to continue to mess with this one and I'll get back to y'all. Until then, thanks for watching.